happen to place kickers in the NFL. The Chicago Bears blocked this field goal try by Green Bay's Chester Marco. But the ball comes right back into his hand. And Marco, with dreams of glory, heads for the goal line in overtime. A place kicker, Marco, wins the game for Green Bay 12-6. And the Chicago Bears, the favorites, are beaten by the pack. Meanwhile, the New Orleans Saints are playing the San Francisco 49ers. Russell Ertzleben of the Saints trying for a field goal to send the game into overtime. He flat out misses it from 34 yards out. Is he unhappy? You bet. The 49ers win the football game 26 to 23 over the Saints. So today, the Saints and the Bears are looking for their first victories of the NFL season. The NFL on CBS. And we are in Chicago at Soldier Field. Hello, everyone. Tim Ryan with Johnny Morris here, where the Bears and the Saints look for victory number one. And, of course, the Saints come in with that explosive offense led by Archie Manning. That's right. They lost the ball game last week, but Archie Manning completed 25 of 40 passes, Tim, and that's not too bad. And as you know, the Saints are explosive. And I've been doing a little bit of research and checking the Bears' situation in the last three or four years, and they have had a tendency with their complicated blitzes and defenses to have problems with veteran quarterbacks. They do well against young rookie quarterbacks who can't pick up those blitzes, but against the veterans, the Bears have had lost a lot of those games. Archie Manning has to qualify as an experienced, good veteran, so I expect the Saints to score some points. The Bears are going to have to score more if they're going to win. Well, they only had six in their loss to Green Bay a week ago, did the Chicago Bears, and offense for them is always led by number 34, Walter Payton. Yes, they've been accused of conservatism, but Peyton is the heart of the Chicago Bears. They've got to get the running game going, then the passing will come. And if the Saints stop Peyton, the Bears are going to be in trouble. And I'm sure that even though they talk about this conservatism, that the Bears are still going to try and run Peyton and then open things up. Well, there are two teams that figure to have good seasons. A playoff team, the Bears, an 8-8 eight eight team under Dick Nolan, the Saints, looking for big things in 1980. But today, they're looking for their first victory. And we're ready for the opening kickoff, so let's go down to the field. The Saints will receive. Bob Thomas will kick it off. Number 41 rookie running back Jimmy Rogers is the deep man, along with Rich Motti, number 84. Motti in the end zone, and he's going to bring it out. To the 20-yard line took a tough hit at the 19 by Brad Shearer and fell over the 20-yard line to the 21. And so the New Orleans Saints in white with black and gold trim will defend to our right, and they will have the ball for the opening offensive series. The Bears to our left in their home, dark uniforms with white trim. And the New Orleans backfield, what a pair. Tony Galbraith and Chuck Muncie. The wide receivers are Wes Chandler, Ike Harris. The tight end is Larry Hardy, playing for the injured Henry Childs. And Hardy had a good game a week ago. First down from the 21-yard line. Archie Manning, number eight, at quarterback. First down pass play, something they did a lot last week. And it's incomplete intended for the tight end, Hardy. On the coverage with Gary Fensick, number 45, the safety. The rest of that Saints offense has James Taylor and Stan Brock at tackles, Robert Woods and Emmanuel Zanders at guard, John Hill at center. And I think, Tim, we see the tenor of this game already. First play, Archie Manning comes out and throws the ball. The Bears had a confusing defense. He shows his mobility. He got away, and I think we're going to be in for some excitement today. It's not going to be any 6-6 game. Manning threw 13 times on first down last week against San Francisco. Second and 10, split left is Chandler. Wide right is Harris. Straight drop, complete to the tight end. Hardy flaring out from the tight end position, knocked out of bounds by Fensick, got to the 30-yard line short of the first down by about two yards. So Manning is one for one, and the aerial-minded Saints have gone to the air immediately. And yet, remember, Chuck Muncie rushed for 1,100 yards a year ago. There's the Chicago front four. Hampton and Hartenstein, Page and Osborne, the linebackers, Muckenstern, Hicks, and Campbell. And an experienced secondary. Schmidt, Fenson, Plank, and Allen Ellis. Muncie nearly fumbled that ball on the pitch out. The Bears get there quickly to stop him for a loss. Muckenstern, the linebacker, number 58, first man to hit him. And the Saints will have to punt. 
The Bears lined up in a tight defense, and uh, Archie Manning may have checked that off because it looked like it was cramped up in the middle, went to the outside, and the Bears just had this slant to the outside and stopped it, so Chicago's going to get the ball. It'll be Russell Erksleben standing at his 15-yard line. The lone deep safety is Lenny Walterscheid for Chicago at the 32 of the Bears. Short punt taken at the 40. Hit at the 45-yard line. The Bears will start with good field position. Dave Weimer, the rookie from Notre Dame, along with the veteran Don Schwartz on the tackle for New Orleans. And so the Chicago Bears first offensive series from their own 46-yard line. And we'll be back here at Soldier Field with the score tied 0-0. We looked at Celica, Accord, and Scirocco, but when we looked at this new Mazda 626, that's all it took. Just one look, that's all it took, yeah, just one look, that's all it took. We really like the way this Mazda 626 performs, not to mention its great mileage, all at a price that makes it really worth looking at. Yeah, the more you look, baby, the more you like. Copier companies have been introducing small copiers with a very interesting claim. It's just as good as a Xerox. It's just as good as a Xerox. Then one day, uh, this compact copier is very versatile. Mm -hmm. It even copies on your own letterhead. Uh -huh. yeah, it's inexpensive, but best of all... I know, it's just as good as a Xerox. Uh, well, uh, it is a Xerox. The Xerox 2600, the compact copier that really is just as good as a Xerox. Tim Ryan with Johnny Morris in Chicago. First down, offensive series for the Bears. Peyton and Williams are the running backs. You're looking at Mike Fitz, the quarterback. Fitz threw 30 times last week in the losing prize, and he's throwing on first down. Sideline intended for the tight end, Mike Cobb, overthrown. So each quarterback, Johnny, throwing on first down. Sideline passes to the tight ends, both incomplete. Mike Phipps did throw 30 passes last week, and they talk about conservative football, but they had some problems with interceptions, and then they got away from their passing game towards the end of the game. As you look at the Chicago backfield, and here are the wide receivers, James Scott, tons of speed, Michael Cobb, the tight end, and there is the line that's been together for several years. All right, Dashnagel is split wide right. Peyton and Williams in the pro set. Second down, pass try. Complete Walter Peyton, good catch out of the backfield. Gain of about five on the play, over the midfield stripe. Knocked out of bounds by the linebacker. And you can see they brought both backs out, took Peyton out into the flat, hoping to get a one-on-one -on -one situation. Mathis brought him down, and uh, that's a good situation. Anytime you can get Walter Peyton with a linebacker covering one-on-one, -on -one, but Mathis did a fine job. But we're seeing a definite tendency, a lot of passes early. Third down, five to go. Saints send in an extra defensive back, Dave Weimer, number 22. And this uh, passing situation, wide right is Bashnagel. James Scott. Phipps, incomplete, intended for Matt Suey, the rookie from Penn State, coming into the backfield for that third down play, but he could not hold on, and the Bears will punt. Same type of patterns for the Bears. They're bringing the backs out, just like the New Orleans Saints do. They had a little twist there in the Saints defensive line. Suey was right open, but the pass was a little bit high. Almost a one-handed snare and almost an interception. The Bears threw every down that series. Rich Motti is back to receive the punt from Bob Parsons. Number 84, Rich Motti. Picked up as a free agent, and he has been a valuable man on this team, and especially so today. Punt hits at the 10-yard uh, line, and it's going to be down right at the 1. And the punter, Bob Parsons, came up with a terrific punt, got a good bounce, covered by Lee Coons, 48 yards, and New Orleans will start in the shadow of their goal line from the 2. And under overcast skies, New Orleans will try to bring it out when we return. I'm not the same crazy coach who used to storm around the sidelines yelling at the officials. I've learned to relax, and I drink light beer for Miller. Do you know that light's got a third less calories than their regular beer? And listen to this. Light doesn't fill me up. 
Besides that, the light tastes fantastic. Oh, sure, there are a lot of other beers around, and you can drink any one you want. But let me tell you this. For like my beer money, from Miller. I everything you like always wanted in a beer, now. and less. As I was saying, I don't care what anybody else... What happened to him? He was in a car accident. With a massive chest injury, fluid builds up, and that could suffocate a patient. Chest drainage is critical at this time. We use a system with a single collection jar made out of an almost shatterproof plastic developed by Phillips Petroleum. And that's important. Because replacing broken jars takes time. And some patients don't have much time. Phillips Petroleum. Good things for cars and the people who drive them. Next. 3.30 Eastern, Hilmer Kenty defends his WBA lightweight title against ex-champion Ernesto Espana. You'll say you saw it on the CBS Sports Spectacular. From the two-yard line, Archie Manning brings the Saints out. First down, Chuck Muncy. Off tackle, right side, picked up about four. Pulled down by the safety, Gary Fensick, number 45. Chuck Muncy last week rushed for 57 yards against San Francisco and caught five passes. A year ago, 1,198 yards, the fifth best rusher in the NFC. It's not too often that a team will gain 400 yards on offense and lose a ball game. Saints fans uh, got to be wondering about that. Coach Nolan uh, was not too pleased, to say the least. Muncy again. Off the left tackle side. Got through Mike Hartenstein who had the first pop at him. Good second effort. Knocked him forward. And he's still short of the first down. Hampton made the tackle. Dan Hampton from the left defensive end. Setting that Bears defense again. Dan Hampton and Mike Hartenstein. Osborne and Page are the tackles. Now the extra defensive back comes in. Walter Scheid along with rookie linebacker Otis Wilson from Louisville. This passing situation, third and two, will they pass? Muncy behind the line and diving in was Osborne and finishing him off was Alan Page. A big defensive play for the Bears. Let's take a look at number 68, Jim Osborne, as he found the gap and came through and took the dive right there and upset Muncy, and that allowed everybody else, Alan Page, number 82, to get in on it, and the Saints will have to Walter punt. The Bears should end up with field, good field position. In the end zone, Russell Erksleben, number 14. Good oh. kick, excellent kick, over midfield. Bouncing, and then takes a Bears bounce, is down by Schwartz at the 45-yard line of New Orleans. So indeed, Chicago will be starting with good field position following the excellent punt by Parsons, which set back New Orleans to the two-yard line. A 35-yard punt, as it turned out from Erksleben, has Chicago in possession with a ball spotted at the 44-yard line of New Orleans. And so the Bears will go on the attack with 11.38 remaining first period here at Soldier Field. For years, the needs of the European driver have been defined by their roads, which are small, and the price of gas, which is large. And Ford has been there. For over 50 years, we've been building small cars in Europe. Today, when America needs high-quality small cars, the incredible world of Ford is working to meet that need, building a new generation of cars with world-class technology right here in America. If you could see tomorrow, tomorrow arrives October 3rd with the new Mercury Lynx and Ford Escort, competing with anything in their class from anywhere in the world. Monday night, don't miss Chevy Chase, Goldie Hawn, and Dudley Moore in an uproarious comedy, Foul Play. Monday night at 8, 7 Central and Mountain, followed by a special showing of MASH. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League, intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of the telecast without the express written consent of the Chicago Bears and the National Football League is prohibited. 
Tim Ryan with Johnny Morris. First down, Bears at the Saints 44. Dave Williams hit behind the line of scrimmage. Penetrating well for the Saints was number 72, Mike Fultz, the four-year man from Nebraska. Now you can see uh, Fisher coming in to bring the play, and the Bears had a lot of problems with getting plays in on time last week, Tim. Uh, they were taking too much time. They're trying to cut down the length of the call of the play so that the quarterback, uh, uh oh, looks like they're having a problem there. But anyway, so the quarterback uh, makes the calls from an original call. The 30 second clock is out. The 30 second clock is out, and so they couldn't count down whether the Bears were making it in time out of the huddle or not. Looks like it's been restored, so the official took that time out to reorganize. I don't know if I made myself clear on that last explanation, but anyway, the man bringing in the play will give up just a, the abbreviated play, and the quarterback takes care of the rest of it. All right, our referee today is Bob McElwee. Bears shifting into the eye. Mike Phipps at the controls. The motion along the line, a flag is down. Payton. Off tackle, did not get much. A yard at most. Hit by Derlin Moore, number 74. Forcing him back inside, and Clarence Chapman, along with Fettersfield, put the tackle on him. And it looked like uh, Mike Fultz might have been, was it Moore or Fultz? Moore might have been the early man on the play for the Saints. Referee Bob McElwee will make it official. Here's the play again. There it is, Moore. Jumping offside. Offside, defense. Number 74. That'll make it second about four and a half. The ball is now at the 38-yard line of the New Orleans Saints. Wide left goes Scott. Out to the right comes Bashnagel. We have not seen Ricky Watts as yet, who suffered a bone bruise in his ankle last week in the loss to Green Bay, but is expected to play today. Play action. Screen pass, Peyton. First down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line of New Orleans. Pushed out of bounds by Ricky Ray, the second-year cornerback from Norfolk State. You can see that the Saints were in that little flex defense that they have, but the play-action pass, there's Peyton up into the traffic, and he gets out, and there is a mistake. Anytime Peyton gets up there into the uh, flow, you got to keep your eye on him, and he makes the first down for Chicago. Here's the isolation of Walter, the fake of the handoff. Nobody hits him and he gets out and then takes it the rest of the way. Two pass receptions for Peyton already today. First down, Bears, driving in New Orleans territory. Matt Suey and Peyton, the running backs. A block from Suey and Peyton runs it to the 23. On the hit was Ray Brown, number 27, the strong safety, along with Tommy Myers, the free safety. Gain of about six on the play, second and four. Good block by the uh, rookie Matt Suey as he kicked Brown out, allowing Peyton to go inside. And notice from the eye formation how deep Peyton is set. He's sometimes seven, eight yards behind the line of scrimmage. And remember the old days, they used to be three, four yards from the line of scrimmage. Dave Williams has come back in for Suey. Peyton goes up on the wing and now shifts back. And a lot of shifting so far by the Bears offensively. Peyton. Cutting it back behind the center and the right guard, short of the first down, got to the 20-yard line where linebacker Reggie Mathis sliced over with help from Myers, the safety. The ball right at the 20-yard line will be third and a little less than two. Robin Earl, the tight end, comes in bringing a play. He's the converted fullback. Johnny, you saw the Bears during the preseason. Has that been a good experiment? So far, he's done very well. It's quite an adjustment to play fullback all your life and then switch to tight end, but he's good, a uh, real good blocker. Earl and Cobb are in the double tight end in the short yardage, and now Bashnagel lines up on the right wing. Williams hit right at the line of scrimmage for no gain. Excellent defensive work by the Saints stacking him up. Joe Fettersfield, the middle linebacker, blasted in there. And Derlin Moore was in there, and Fetterspill, and you can see number 50, Ken Bordelon, all of them right there. Tommy Myers even got up there, number 37, so the Bears are going to have to go for the field goal. Bob Thomas has become kind of a Mr. Automatic for Chicago lately. They'll spot it at the 27-yard line. It'll be a 37-yard attempt for number 16. 
It is good. Bob Thomas with a little wind assistance knocks it cleanly through and the Bears have opened the scoring. Here at Soldier Field we have 8.37 remaining in the first period. The Bears three and the Saints nothing. Where can you find someone to service all the parts of your car? With the know-how and equipment to check wheels, brakes, engine, suspension, almost everything. Someone who'll give you a written estimate and fix only what you want fixed. Firestone Car Service. That's where. 24,000 Firestone Car Service bays are waiting to serve you for this week's specials. Check your newspaper. When it's your vacation and you fly there for less. That's Transamerica Airlines. That's Transamerica. When you can get more life insurance than you thought you could afford. That's Occidental Life. That's Transamerica. When you rent a car and get the feeling that you're number one. That's Budget Rent-A-Car. There are many companies in the Transamerica family, and they all stand for just one thing. First-rate service at a fair price. That's Transamerica. Next Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern, 1979 Derby and Preakness winner Spectacular Bid is slated to lead the pack of the 1980 Woodward State. You'll say you saw it on CBS Sports. Bob Thomas will kick it off for the Bears. And Rich Motti brings it from just behind the goal line. Motti over the 20 to the 21, where he has stopped. First man down there was Otis Wilson, along with Al Harris, number 90. Well, uh, some interesting scores, Johnny, this second week of the NFL season. Atlanta, 28 to 14. They still have three minutes remaining in the first half. Steve Bartkowski with three touchdown passes. And Philadelphia is leading Minnesota 14 to 7. That game is in the second quarter. And Buffalo, Buffalo leading the Jets 10 to 3 in the second period. First down for the Saints here in Chicago. Oh, raw play. Big hole, Muncie. Still going out to the 38-yard line. Chuck Muncie, Alan Ellis, and Gary Campbell finally stop him. But what a beautiful play for the Saints. And watch Robert Woods, number 65, as he drops back and then picks up the middle linebacker right there. He hits Tom Hicks. That was the key block as Muncie carries that ball rather loosely, but he seems to tuck it away right at the time of impact. Uh, pretty good running by Muncie. A good play. And he did tuck it away at the last moment, didn't he? First down for the Saints on a perfectly executed draw play. Manning brings them out. Split left is Chandler. Wide right is Ike Harris. Muncie and Galbraith, the running backs. Motion along that line. And it may be that the Saints drew the Bears over. The Saints were trying to call an audible. If you noticed, Alan Page shifted over right in front of the center, and you saw Manning's head turn, and he was trying to check off the play, and everybody got a little bit confused. And that's where the Bear defenses uh, sometimes can mess up a quarterback. There you saw the infraction. Ball start, number 79, offense. Emmanuel Zanders, the culprit. The referee, Bob McElwee. The rest of the officials, umpire Al Conway. Headlinesman, Dave Hawk. Line judge, John Everett. Back judge, Ray Douglas. Side judge, Bob Rice. The field judge is at Merrifield today. And it is first down at 15. The Saints in white to our right. Ball at their own. And he complete wide open Chandler with a lot of running room gets the first down and into Bears territory at the 49. He was pulled down by Doug Plank, number 46, but Chandler Johnny was wide open. He certainly was. He waited for the back, Muncie, number 42, who has good speed. Now watch to the left there. He goes straight down the field, clears the zone, and Chandler comes in underneath. And when he gets his hands on the ball, watch out. Doug Plank there in on the tackle, but not before Chandler who got the first down, and he had seven passes for more than 50 yards last year. How about that? And 65 catches last year. He's a busy receiver. An 18-yard gain, first down. New Orleans at Chicago's 49. Play action. Chandler complete for another first down. Slicing into the middle on the coverage was Allen Ellis, the cornerback, and Plank coming up to help. But Chandler, again, open enough to catch it. 
Nice play action by Mann, and he faked the run here, turns, and Chandler's up at the top, bottom of your screen, comes across the field, and there is Manning right in there. Another first down, and the great thing about Archie Manning is he hits everybody. Both wide receivers will catch a lot of balls today. The tight end, Hardy, caught six passes last week. The backs, I think Galbraith had nine last week. First down, New Orleans driving. Draw play, Muncie, another big hole. Muncie may go inside the 15 to the 11-yard line. Terry Schmidt pulled him down from behind. And twice they've executed that draw play to perfection. Why leave a good thing, says Archie Manning. So after throwing the passes, he comes back with the hole. Look at that hole. John Hill, the center, made a great block there. And if Terry Schmidt hadn't have dropped off here, Muncie would have had the touchdown. But they're in great field position. The Saints are marching. The ball at the 13-yard line of Chicago. New Orleans with a beautifully executed drive thus far. Wide left, Newton Chandler split right, Ike Harris. He's in motion behind the ball. Muncie sweeping. Cut down just over the line of scrimmage, picked up maybe a yard. Muckensturm, the linebacker, fighting off a block to make the hit. Pick up of a yard on the play. It'll bring up second and nine. At Milwaukee, Detroit leads Green Bay 3-0 on a 32-yard field goal by Eddie Murray in the first period. Pittsburgh and Baltimore are scoreless. Now make that uh, Pittsburgh three. Baltimore nothing on a Matt Barr field goal. 7.35 remaining in the first period. Pitch out Muncie. Nowhere to go. He's cut down at the 10-yard line. Gary Fensick, the safety, with help from Gary Campbell, the linebacker, and a gain of maybe a yard and a half at most. This is their first run to the left side. Number 54, Tom Hicks, was the key. He's the middle linebacker. He went down the line, avoided the blocks, and prevented the cut-up and made a good play for the defense. So now we have a key play, third down and about six. You know, Muncy's carried the ball eight times already. And those two big gainers give him 51 yards. Six defensive backs in on this passing play. Six defensive backs for the Bears. Manning with a long count. Muncie sweeping right. And they cut him down again. Just inside the 10. Doug Plank, number 46, made the hit. Muncie waiting for the blocking to materialize. Hesitated a hair when he turned it on. The Bears were there. Big defensive play by Chicago brings up fourth down. And Doug Plank will hit you, number 46. He's like a flying missile, and he came through all the interference and knocked it down, and now we'll see how the young man who had a rough week last week is. Russell Erksleben will attempt the placement from the 17-yard line, make it the 16. It'll be a 26-yard try. Erksleben steady as she goes, and this game is tied up. And so a, an excellent drive by New Orleans finally stopped at the 10 yard line of the Bears, but they come up with the tying field goal with time winding down now in this first period of play. Fairly windy right now, Johnny, as uh, the wind seems to have come up and uh, we are not seeing any blue skies yet. It was supposed to be a pleasant sunny day, but it's been overcast and getting more windy. It's probably the coolest day in Chicago all summer, if you can still call this summer. This is a sellout, in fact, an all time Chicago Bear record for attendance at home, 64,000. However, it was not sold out on the 72-hour blackout, so it's not being seen in the city of Chicago, but they're seeing it in the outlying areas and, of course, back there around New Orleans country. Well, there are 7,000 new seats here at Soldier Field. They filled in the left end zone to complete the bowl, and it's the beginning of a four-year renovation plan that uh, will bring uh, old Soldier Field into modern times, and so uh, I guess Maybe some of the fans were taken a bit by surprise that there were all those seats available, uh, that many more. It didn't get sold out in time for the TV blackout to be lifted. But at 10.20 this morning, they had sold the last ticket for the game. Dave Williams is the deep man. You can see him just inside the 10, now backing up near the 5. Mike Ulmer and McClendon, Willie McClendon, are the up men. Ertzleben's kickoff is short. The bounce oh. past Ulmer. He regains it at the 20. And he's dropped at the 19-yard line. Wayne Wilson, number 30, is there to put the hit on him along with 51 Stan Holloway, reserve linebacker. 
Mike Elmer, kind of an interesting story, Johnny. Yes, he uh, has been trying to make it on with teams for two or three years and has finally stuck with the Bears as an extra safety and a cornerback. And you know, that was kind of a dangerous play. The Saints almost nabbed that ball. A lot of players don't realize that you can fair catch a kickoff if you want. Everybody's on side when you kick mm -hmm. it off. The ball is now at the 19 yard line. First down, Bears. Michael Phipps at the controls. Peyton and Williams, the running backs. First down pass complete to James Scott. What a hit. He took from Ricky Ray, but he held on to the ball. And it looks like he has the first down yardage. Yes, he does from the spot of forward progress. And the Bears come out. A simple turn in. Notice Peyton going out on the flat. That takes the linebacker out of the play and allows Scott to have that lane there. And boy, I'll tell you, Ricky Ray came up and really popped James Scott. Ray, the number six pick last year, spent most of the season on injured reserve. Being pushed a little bit by the rookie Dave Waymer for that right cornerback spot. First down, Chicago. Draw play, Williams. Williams stacked up by the linebacker Bordelon, number 50, and Don Reese, the defensive end. Gain of maybe two, let's call it second and eight. In comes the rookie tight end Robert Fisher, the Bears' 12th round pick from SMU this year. Out comes Robin Earl, the converted running back, who's now on the tight end core. There without Greg Latta, out with a hand injury, and Roland Harper, the fine fullback who had knee problems last year and is now on the injured reserve with a hamstring pull. Second and eight. Fips to throw, complete to Peyton. Peyton oh. spins away from one defender. That was Mathis, and finally is pulled down by Bordelon with help from Ray Brown. First down, Bears. It's amazing how they leave Walter Payton alone. Watch him circle out of the backfield, and there's nobody really assigned to him. He comes out there, and you take a guy like Walter Payton, boy, you can't, you gotta have somebody on him, and he gets away from Mathis, and he could have broken this for a long run, but notice the mobility. Finally, Mathis makes a good play by coming back after being faked out and makes the tackle, but they're going to have to keep a close eye on Mr. Payton. First down, Chicago at their own 44-yard line. Play action again. Pips deep to Scott. Overthrown, and Scott had his man beaten. Clarence Chapman, number 24, and Pips threw that ball a long way, Johnny. Well, he's got to do that because Scott has such tremendous speed and so does Chapman but when Scott gets even with you he can really turn it on pretty good pass blocking for Phipps let's watch the the rush by New Orleans a straight four man rush nobody gets close he turns it on you can notice the speed here but the ball was just overthrown incomplete but the Bears are not playing conservative football as they did last <laughs> week <laughs> Chris Haynes is command to give James Scott a rest after his long run. Slot formation left. Bashnagel in the slot. Pips on second and ten. Complete to the tight end, Fisher. And he breaks a tackle. Robert Fisher. Touchdown. Robert Fisher, the rookie from SMU, breaks it down the sidelines. And the Bears go in front, nine to three, and listen to the crowd. Young rookie, one of the last players drafted. In fact, the Bears' last draft choice, he hasn't played all that much, but he got a situation where the Bears set it up. They brought the backs out, and he was a man-for-man -man situation. Ray Brown had to make the tackle right here, and it was a key one. He hit him high, but he's a big man, 240 pounds almost. And he turned it on and he moves. He's like Earl Campbell down that sidelines, isn't he? Robert Fisher, 56 yards for the score. The point after by Thomas. And with 41 seconds remaining in this first quarter, the Bears have exploded onto the scoreboard with a touchdown. And they go in front of the New Orleans Saints 10 to 3. Well, Robert Fisher currently third on the three deeps behind Mike Cobb and Robin Earl, the converted fullback, and of course Greg Latta, who has been a starter, is on the injured reserve with a hand injury, but I'd say that young Mr. Fisher helped his cause sticking with his team with that big play. And more importantly for Chicago, they have had a tendency to do ignore the tight ends over the years. Uh, 
A tight end caught a key pass for him. Uh, Archie Manning does not ignore the tight ends. Deep man is Rich Motti waiting the kickoff from Bob Thomas. The Bears going 80 yards in five plays. 56 yard touchdown pass to Fisher. The up men for the Saints are Jimmy Rogers and Wayne Wilson. Rogers is the rookie running back. As we see that Chicago drive, it used up only 234. Jimmy Rogers, a first year man from Oklahoma, but in the Canadian League. Wayne Wilson, a second year man from Little Shepherd College. So Bob Thomas, who has a field goal and a point after to his credit so far, will kick it off. Motti brings it out behind the wedge. Cannot get to the 20-yard line. He was met there by Otis Wilson, the rookie linebacker, the Bears' number one pick. And right behind him was Ron Rideout. So the Saints will try to move it again. Remember, they had an excellent drive the last time they had the ball. They came up with a field goal at the end of it when the Bears finally stopped them at the 10. I was talking to Coach Dick Nolan last night about uh, the philosophy with Manning. He gets to call all his own plays with a little advice sometimes between series, whereas the Bears send every play in from the sidelines. I said, you ever thought about wigwagging plays into Archie Manning? He said, no, he knows as much about the game as I do. And uh, <laughs> he's such a, such a smart quarterback and a mobile quarterback. We saw the time remaining first quarter. Saints first down. Galbraith straight ahead behind the left tackle, J.T. Taylor. Bold his way for about three yards. Hartenstein, Page, a bunch of Bears were in on it. Campbell, a linebacker. Call it second and seven for New Orleans. Did you know the Saints scored more than 30 points six times last year? Well, you know, you could see they were a team on the rise. They finished with an 8-8 eight eight record a year ago, and that's what made the loss of disappointing to Saints fans last week, because when you come off a good, optimistic season, you think that you should get off to a good start the following year, but it is only one of 16 games, and that's the end of the first quarter. 10-3 to three Bears. American cars guzzle gas. American cars are all style and no substance. American cars don't last. To all that, American Motors says nuts. This American Motors Concord and this spirit are built to be more than just good looking. They're tough, tougher than ever before. The only American cars with galvanized steel and 100% of the exterior body panels. That's right, 100%. And Concord and Spirit are more fuel efficient than ever before. This Concord actually gives you better mileage than Chevy Citation. Only the tough Americans give you Z-Bard factory rust protection and a full five-year no rust through warranty. Tough can be beautiful. Plus the exclusive American Motors buyer protection plan, still with the best economy car warranty coverage in the industry. Concord and Spirit. For good-looking high-mileage cars, don't sell the tough American short. Concord and Spirit, built to last from American Motors. I'll tell you, I was a born soccer player. Did everything with my feet. Took out the rubbish with my feet, made the bed with my feet, drove my mum crazy. But I finally found something I enjoy doing with my hands, drinking light beer from Miller. Light has a third less calories than the regular beer. It's less filling. But what really makes me happy is the taste. It's terrific. Now, my mum should be happy too. Look, mum, no feet. <laughs> light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. The NFL on CBS. Today's game is sponsored by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. And by the American Motors, Concord, Spirit, and Eagle, built to last from American Motors. The man of the moment, Archie Manning, number eight, the veteran quarterback who engineered a drive for a field goal the last time the Saints had the ball. He has second and seven. In Saints territory at the 22. Tim Ryan with Johnny Morris. As we see that halftime score, that's a lot of points up there. Atlanta, New England. High formation for the Saints. I believe the first time we've seen that look so far today. Play action. They flare it out to Chandler. He's hit immediately by Gary Campbell. Chandler juggled the ball, but I think had he even made the first sure-handed catch, 
he didn't have much room to maneuver over there. Campbell was very much on the play. There's Philadelphia leading Minnesota 14 to 7 at the half. And there, Buffalo 10, the Jets 3 at the half. So it is third down and nine as it was a loss of two on the good defensive play by Campbell. And six defensive backs are in the Bears backfield here on this passing situation for New Orleans. Out to the right is Harris, left is Chandler. Up the middle for the tight end incomplete, but a flag is down. It was intended for Hardy. Fensick on the coverage. And the infraction would appear to be against the Bears. There's also, however, a flag in the New Orleans backfield, and a good guess would be holding against the Saints back there. So we may have a couple of penalties negating one another. We may have the play run over again. Here's an update. The Lions, after beating the Rams, now lead Green Bay. Well, if you're a good lip reader, you picked up <laughs> on that. That was Bob McElwee. His microphone isn't working. And uh, you can see from the signals holding against the Saints. The legal use of the hands. Holding. Here we are. Defensive pass interference. Defensive holding. Offset. Replay the down. Okay. Well, you get two against the Bears, one against the Saints, and you still come out all even. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and, you know, last week they had over 200 penalties in the NFL. They've had a lot of them this year. Well, I think part of that is that in the early season, they've all had only four preseason games to work out the kinks instead of the six the way they used to. So the early season games seem to have more penalties in it. Manning straight back up oh. the middle, complete to Galbraith. Galbraith away from Muckensturm has the first down yardage, and the Saints bring it out smartly under pressure all the way to their 37-yard line. Sidearm Archie, they call him. Uh, the Bears haven't been blitzing all that much. They've got four men coming in. He has to kind of throw this sidearm, and there it is, right in the old, a little bit behind him, but uh, Galbraith made a nice grab, and he carries that ball rather loosely, too. Well, he and Muncie have big hands. <laughs> I guess that's the answer. He got nine last week. As you mentioned earlier, he is their key receiver out of the backfield. First down, Saints on the move again. Harrison motion behind the ball. Oh, play action, and Manning taking it the other way, upfield. Incomplete, intended for Harris. Terry Schmidt may have got a hand on that. We'll see if we can pick it up on the replay. Unbelievable play. You're going to see Allen Page, number 82, go right by Archie Manning. He doesn't know. He thought he handed the ball off. There goes 82 right there. He says, where's the ball? And there comes Archie out, and they almost had a touchdown on this play, a broken play. If it had been just a little further, Harris might have had the touchdown. Actually, it hit him in the hands there. Maybe Schmidt might have deflected it slightly. Yeah, you can't really tell there. It was a little hard to say whether uh, Schmidt got a hand on it or not. It might have just gone off Harris's hands. Uh, in any event, it is second and ten, and there are Archie's passing stats off to a good start. They trail on the scoreboard ten to three. Draw play. Muncie oh. again a big gainer. Muncie to the 43 yard line of the Bears. Allen Ellis number 48. Gary Fensick number 45 finally stop him and they're killing them with that draw play Johnny. They sure are. That's been the big play for them. Let's take a look at it. Let's watch Xanders and Hill right there in the middle line. Robert Wood. They just clean them out and then Muncie just makes an adjustment. Dips to the outside. Pretty good tackle here by Ellis. You got Muncie coming at you full on. Okay. And Ellis made a nice tackle and Gary Fensick helped out to bring him down. Chuck Muncie's got 70 yards rushing and we've just begun the second period here. Getting a well-deserved rest. They bring Wayne Wilson in number 30 to join Galbraith. First down, Galbraith. Bears penetration and he gets nowhere, maybe a yard. Osborne dove in there to turn him upfield sooner than he wanted. And Alan Page made the tackle. A gain of half a yard, maybe a yard at the most. We look at that Bears defense. Young Dan Hampton, the second-year man from Arkansas. What a rookie year he had. Mike Hartenstein, the six-year man from Penn State. Alan Page begins his 14th season. Acquired on waivers from Minnesota two years ago. He's found a home with the Bears. And Jim Osborne, the underrated nine-year man from Southern University. Harrison motion. Manning forced out. 
Upfield complete uh -huh. to Harris, who was open, coming back to help out his quarterback, found lots of area, and the Saints have a first down at the 21 of Chicago. Bensick made the tackle. Archie Manning, he is something else. That's why a football game with New Orleans Saints is always exciting. The Bears put the rush on. There's four of them. Hampton got caught inside. Brock made a nice tackle, a nice block, I should say, and Manning is so mobile, he just came out and looked for the first man to be open, and it was Ike Harris. First down, Saints driving once more. They're at the 21 of Chicago. They trail 10 to 3. Boy, that was a good block by, block by the rookie, Brock. He really took care of Hampton. Stan Brock, the number one pick out of Colorado, became the starter right away. Draw play, Wilson. This time they get him. Page got a piece. The first penetration again by Osborne, who slowed him up for Mark Hartenstein and Alan Page, and he got really zipped. Might have lost a half a yard. They, in fact, they're going to mark a yard loss, so it'll be second and 11. You run so many draws like that, there is a method to the madness, and that is that if you'd run a few of those, and especially if you're successful, those linemen, those bear defensive linemen, are always going to take that little hesitation to see for the look for the draw, and that affects their pass rush. Well, the Bears try to slow down the Saints again, who drove into the 10 and had to settle for the field goal on their last drive. Wilson continues in the backfield with Galvin. Flags and whistles. And they may have used up a little too much time. He probably was trying to audibleize up at the line there and didn't get the playoff. He was trying to tell Ike Harris to come in motion. He was the left split end, and you may have noticed that the huddle I mean, up at behind the center, Manning was saying, come on, he waved his hand, and Harris was a little slow on picking it up, and it cost him that extra two or three seconds and a penalty. Well, this is a key penalty. Delay of the game, offense, second down. Both these teams suffered from these kinds of penalties in their opening games. They would move the ball well and then come up with an untimely penalty, which set them back, and they either came up empty or settled for field goals. Second and about 16, 17 for the Saints, and six defensive backs are in again for the Chicago Bears in the situation defense. Manny, intercepted. Waldershot, number 23. The ball had a little wobble on it, intended for Wayne Wilson out of the backfield. Not sure whether. Manning was hit just as he released it or not. Let's see if we can pick that up with not a good pass. Here it is. A little rush. In comes Walter Scheid. The Bears have the ball. Got a date, Jack? Do I ever? Want to look good? Yeah. Try this. Oh, come on, Gabriel. This vest must cost a fortune. But it's yours for $9.95. You're kidding. Uh-uh. Just buy two Gabriel shocks and get the vest for $9.95. I'll try it out. Thanks. Jack, the shocks? Sure, sure. Oh, Jack. Jack. I'm Joe Duncan, State Farm agent, Cincinnati, Ohio, speaking for thousands of State Farm agents around the country. You know, there are a lot of reasons why people come to State Farm Agents and stick with State Farm Agents year after year. I think one of the big reasons is service. State Farm built its reputation on service. People expect it, they are paying for it, and we deliver. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is Let's watch Manning's interception here. You see 23, Len Walderscheid faking the blitz. He goes back in here, and it seems that he would be in Manning's view, number 23. Manning's looking downfield, and then just comes over into the flat. And Len Walderscheid, number 23, the Bears' fifth back, makes the interception, and Chicago has the ball. Archie, you'd like to have that one back. He didn't have the zip on it. I thought he might have been hampered by the rush, but as the replays indicated, he was not. Green Bay has gone in front of Detroit 7-6 to six in the second quarter. Bears came out in a strange formation. Two men in the slot with Peyton on the wing, but they put him back in the eye, and he gets to the 30-yard line before he stopped. Fettersfield put the hit on him after a gain of about four. You know, Johnny, that is only his third carry, quite a contrast from a week ago when he carried it 31 times. The Bears are throwing the ball. They certainly are. They may start running a little bit more. Did you notice that uh, 
the Saints went into their flex defense that time. Uh, that is designed to stop the runs. We'll see what they do on this play. So we have second and six for the Chicago Bears. They lead it, and it's free. Matt Suey in the game and carries it straight ahead for about two. The rookie from Penn State, number two pick. And Walter Payton has just become the eighth NFL player to rush for over 7,000 yards, and he's only in his sixth year in the NFL. He has 7,003. I think he's also the eighth on the all-time rushing list, so I would say he's done okay in yes. <laughs> a short time. Robert Fisher has come in at tight end. Mike Cobb is out. Dave Williams is back in at fullback. Williams shifts up to the wing. They're in the slot right. Phipps intended for Williams incomplete. Flag down. Ray Brown on the coverage. And flags are down in the defensive backfield. Let's see what that brings. Now you're going to see Walter Payton shift back into his normal halfback spot, and he'll go out. That's a double shift by the Bears. Williams comes up on the wing. You can see Ray Brown near 27. Comes back and then reacts to the play, and he kind of grabbed the hold of Williams as he came out of the backfield, and that may have been in the penalty. He just reached out and grabbed him by the hand, it looked like to me. Referee Bob McElwee with the news. Defensive holding, number 27, first down. Good call, Johnny Morris. First down for the Bears at the 37-yard line. There it is right there. Such an inconsequential hold, too. It really had no effect on the play. That's why you got to keep your hands to yourself. 8.50 to go, first half. Bears lead it 10 to 3. Tim Ryan with Johnny Morris. The NFL on CBS from Chicago Soldier Field for Peyton. Incomplete. And just as well, he was going nowhere and would have taken a loss. They put the all-out blitz that time. First time, I think, in this game that they put the blitz on Mike Phipps. Fetterspill came, Mathis came, and Phipps thought, well, I better get rid of it because I don't want to eat it. That ball might have been tipped on route to uh, Peyton, making it impossible for him to catch, but he was surrounded by those blitzers and uh, would have been a loss on the play. That's a good time to drop the ball. So it is second down and 10. Gray skies over Chicago. No precipitation as yet. Bears shift into the pro set. Bash angle is left. Scott is right. Phipps. Scott to midfield. First down. Clarence Chapman, number 24, made the tackle. But the Bears are moving again. A simple down and in for James Scott. As the Bears sent both backs out, but five block, five linemen blocked four defensive rushmen, and Scott came back towards the ball, and that was the key to that reception. Come back and get the ball when you got a lot of traffic around there. Fisher is out. Cobb is back in at the tight end right. Chicago eye formation. Good defensive play by the blitzing safety Tommy Myers. Turned him back upfield sooner than he wanted to go, and they closed him down with Reggie Mathis making the tackle after a gain of a yard, maybe two. Watch Joe Fetterspiel, number 58. He saw Peyton go that way, and he came right there. And then the, they forced him back in with Tommy Myers, and there was Fetterspiel and Mathis to make the tackle, but Peyton did get back and actually got a yard, didn't he? Yes, he did. He got about a yard and a half. Ball is at the 49 in New Orleans. Wide to the right goes Bash, Nagel 84. Split left is Scott, 89. Phipps, lots of time. Incomplete out of the hands of Dave Williams. And Dave, a little eager to start running with the ball. Just didn't hold on. I'll say one thing, the Bears' pass blocking has been excellent. You know, the Saints have some pretty good defensive linemen. They have, you know, Grooms and Reese, and these guys have not been a factor on the pass rush so far in this game. And if you give Phipps time, you know, you're going to complete passes. Excellent point. That certainly has been a factor thus far. Grooms had a pair of sacks against San Francisco a week ago. And the Bears have a lot of respect for Grooms, and particularly Don Reese. So far, they've shut them down. Third down. Third and about eight and a 
half. Big play defensively for New Orleans here. Phipps runs out of the pocket. And stretching, trying to get the first down yardage. I don't think he got it. He was pulled down by Ray Brown, Tommy Myers. And I don't know whether he got it. It'll be just short. Phipps, not known as a running quarterback, did not a bad job there, seeing the hole opening up in front of him and trying to get that first. This so requires a measure. Let's watch that New Orleans Saints pass rush. Pretty good blocking by Albrecht and uh, Dennis Lick there. Good coverage downfield, so Phipps takes off, and Myers did a good job of preventing Phipps from getting the first down. It looks to be just a touch short. There it is. Mike says a couple of inches, and they're on the 40-yard line. Are they going to be conservative or aggressive? And it looks like aggressive. They're going to go in and go for it. Well, that always makes the fans happy. Makes a coach happy if they make it. That's right. And the fans unhappy if they don't. <laughs> but I think Bear fans in this situation, after last week, no matter what, they're, they're happy to see the Bears go for it. There's Neil Armstrong, the head coach on the right. He'll be distinguished gray hair. Double tight ends are in. Cobb and Robin Earl, number 81. Bears with Roland Harper, Greg Latta on the injured reserve from their offense. Virgil Livers and rookie Billy Perrin from the defense. What a time to fake that little plunge and have a back come out. Uh, that'll be fun, Johnny. They're really stacked up, both offensively and defensively. Phipps has it. Mike Phipps behind the center, Dan Neal, and the guards, Jackson and Sorry. And the Bears keep their drive alive. We have... 6.25 to go here in the first half. Chicago leading at 10 to 3. Tim Ryan with Johnny Morris. At Chicago Soldier Field, they're going to measure again. I've given them the first down. and uh, But the Saints are asking for the measurement, and they've got every right to do so. Meanwhile, baseball fans, after four, Baltimore and Toronto are tied at one. The Yankees in Boston... A rain delay has prevented that game from uh, getting started yet, so that's a look at the American League pennant race for you. Doesn't tell you a whole lot, but Baltimore and the Blue Jays are 1-1 in the fourth. I see where the Packers took a 7-6 lead over Detroit. First down, Bears. So Mike Phipps will try to take it on home now there in New Orleans territory with a first down. Bashnagel wide right. Scott to the left. Matt Suey is in with Walter Payton. Payton out of the eye, straight ahead, got three. Fultz, 72, made the hit on him. The left defensive tackle, a four-year man from Nebraska. When he was drafted number two, 1977, Joe Campbell was the number one pick. They were both defensive down linemen, and they were to be the future big, strong men on that front four. But Campbell has been converted to a linebacker, pared down to 230 pounds, and he is a reserve in that category. But Fultz has gone on to become a starter. Second down and six. Payton's cutting it back behind Dennis Lick and dives forward trying to get to the 30. For the first down marker, Clarence Chapman made the tackle, and I think they stopped him just short. Great Quick recovery by Walter Payton. As you see, Dave Williams goes into motion, and he follows his motion man around that time. And here's where Payton slips, cuts back against the grain, and boy, he is quick, isn't he? Finally, uh, Derlin Moore gets a hand on him. So does Myers and bring him down, but not before the Bears got within about a yard or less than a yard of a first down. Third down at the 31-yard line. Wilder Payton. Dave Williams ahead of him. Payton stacked up by the middle of that Saints defensive unit. And it would appear he did not get to the first down yardage marker. Clarence Chapman and Joe Campbell, who we were just talking about, in there to make the initial hit. 
Well, the Bears are faced with the same decision they had a moment ago, and I think they'll probably go for it again because it's still quite a long field goal. So it goes to show you how you can miss it, though, with a half a yard to go. They didn't get it that time. Will they get it this time? Matt Suey brought the play in. They were trying to call a timeout. Called by the captain on the field, and it has not done so. Pips rolling. Pips running. First down to the 23-yard line in New Orleans. Upset by number 27, Ray Brown, but not before he was there with a first down yardage. And that has to be a surprise play. Pips rolling out and running himself behind Reeve Sori, number 69. Brown tips him up but he gets the first down Chicago. Let's watch 27. How does the defensive back react to that kind of a play? Here's number 69, 270 pounds here, a romp and stomp and dynamite coming out. Phipps cuts up the field, Brown makes the tackle, but the Bears have a first down. The ball is at the 23 yard line of the New Orleans Saints. A time consuming drive here by the Bears. 3-10 remaining first half. Peyton bursting off tackle inside the 20 to the 19. Mike Fultz upsetting him with a one-handed tackle. A gain of about six for Walter Payton. They spot it just inside the 20. Robert Fisher and Dave Williams come in. Matt Suey, Mike Cobb come out for Chicago. Substitution in the NFL these days is more and more like a Chinese fire drill. <laughs> I've never known what a Chinese fire drill was. You know now. It's an expression that uh, seems apt when you watch the way these coaches substitute, especially defensively. Second and seven. Right ahead, Dave Williams. He gets to about the 17 yard line where Reggie Mathis put the hit on him. Got a good block from Noah Jackson. I know one thing that's going through Dick Nolan's mind right now is that the Bears are controlling the ball a lot. They're keeping it away from his quarterback and from the offense of New Orleans, and that's going to hold the Saints scoring down if the Bears continue to do this. They've eaten up, what, four minutes? Digital clock or a coin box. Not if you buy our Honda Accord LX. It's got all those things and more. Why not give up your luxury car for a luxury car? Honda, we make it simple. Reunity on ice? That's nice. Reunity on ice? That's nice. Reunity on ice. That's nice. Reunity on ice. That's nice. Reunity is America's best loved imported wine. Red, white, and rosé. Like love, it's pure and natural. Were you needy on ice? That's nice. Tuesday night, it's the all-new Linda Carter special Encore. Merle Haggard and Tom Jones join Wonder Woman Linda for a dazzling hour of singing and dancing Tuesday night.